back guys to another episode of Central Oregon Shenanigans. Today I'm at my buddy Bubba's house and uh, he allowed me to film his flatbed. If you guys are tuning in for the first time, please give this video a big thumbs up. Do hit that subscribe button. We have a lot going on on this channel. We're going to be reviewing some flatbeds today. I know we've done that in the past, but it's our two year mark. It's our two year mark on the flatbed. Since we've done it, it's coming up on two years. I'm going to do the two year review on the CM flatbed. So guys, this is my 2001 Super Duty. It is a 7.3 Power Stroke Diesel short box. Um, I've done, I'm gonna go over some things today uh, on some questions. People always ask me on the channel and I respond back. So I'm just gonna go ahead in this, the review video, answer some of those questions. One, the first question I get asked on the short box is how wide and long is it? So I've got a tape measure here today. Widthwise, inside these rails, it is six foot, seven inches. We go over to Bubba's. His is a long box Dodge. This is a uh, 2000, a little over, I think it's 2003, 2002 Dodge, uh, 3500. And inside, inside of his boards here that he's got on here, this is a little different uh, designed bed, but it's seven foot or six foot, uh, six foot, six inches. He doesn't have the lip. This actually, this bed has this outer piece and it actually just falls off all the way around where mine had these lips. These CMs come in different styles, guys. Lots of different styles. Uh, you can notice that the headache rack is shaped a, a little bit different on this CM flatbed. The CM flatbed also has side boxes on it with keys. There's four of them. One in the front of the wheel, back of the wheel. He also has a step here and he's got two side boxes. There's a lot of different models of CM beds, guys. You're gonna have to check out their website. Uh, I don't know what these are all called. I don't even remember what mine's called. But these two beds are two different years. I do believe that's a 2016. I know mine's a 17. Or actually mine's an 18. Review so far. What do I like? What do I dislike about it? A lot of guys um, will ask me, what have I towed any weight with it yet? In the goose on the gooseneck. Yes, I've towed a lot of weight with the gooseneck. I've also done a lot of bumper pulling with this CM bed. I love the way the gooseneck pulls. If you come up over here, reach across here and open this plate, you've got a 26,000, that's right, 26,000 pound rated gooseneck hitch. It is a 14,500 rated bumper pull rating on these beds. 14,500 on the bumper pull. Bumpers, says it right there. If we jump up here and open bubs, He's gonna have the 26,000 rated hitch as well. And his gooseneck has never been used in his bed. We're gonna have to pop his cherry. All right, guys. So we already did width. Let's do length real quick. Originally, my bed was a short box Ford F250. All the way to this goofy little end piece here, guys, is seven, seven foot exactly. Seven foot exactly to the end of this little dovetail back here. And if we go measure bubs, we measure bubs here from the back of the cab or that plate, it's eight foot seven inches, guys. Actually, eight foot six inches eight foot six inches to the back of this dove. Uh, you can tell Bubs is a one year older bed than mine because of these lights. They changed up and went to these little bullets now. These are brighter than those. These are condescent bulb. Pretty sure there's a condescent bulb in there. Up front though, his has got an LED on it, which is pretty bright with mine. Uh, I like the side boxes. I wish I could afford I could afford the side boxes back when I went to put this bed on. It really does it really does look good on this Dodge. I'm not a big Dodge fan, especially this body style. Um, so things I don't like about these CM beds. I think we'll start at the front, work our way back. I don't like the design of the headache rack right here, how it, it 
when they bend it, it caves in. I don't know else, how else you would do it. Uh, maybe do some cuts and some welds. It'd, you know, it'd be a little bit more in the manufacturing process of these, but Bubs has got it too over there. He's got, you know, that goofy bend, I call it, on the, on the headache rack. The, uh, oops, sorry, kitty. And not all of them. I noticed some of them get some goofy rippling in them. But uh, I'm not a big fan because it, it pooches out right here. Mine, this one didn't actually do that, but a lot at the fact at the dealership I seen just those bins, uh, they're just funky. The second thing I don't like about these beds is this piece right here, uh, especially on mine. You can only tell it's welded, spot welded there, 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 and there. I just don't like that. Otherwise, I do like the look of that headache rack with the lights in it. I do like the reverse lights. It's really nice at nighttime. Uh, second thing I don't like about the headache rack, or third thing I don't like about the headache rack on these, is this piece. It's flimsy. There's no support on the backside. It's just welded there, there, and down here. And I've already, you can see right here, I've already uh, put something up against here strapped it down and it's already cracked. This wasn't a welded piece. You'd think that they run a bead all the way along the seam, but actually it's um, some caulking or maybe it's paint, I'm not sure, but mine chipped out right there. And I've already got some structure problems with the front of my bed. I really think, I really think they should have uh, done something a little bit different there. Uh, let's go check Bub's. You can see here on Bub's bed, think they were having the same problem on these CM beds because right there it's already cracking and chipping and somebody's already taken a, some spray paint and spray painted along his and I noticed that they did some relief drills on his I don't know if that's aftermarket somebody put those in or if that's factory but here listen to that it's loose three things about the headache rack that I don't like and I think they should step up their game a little bit Moving right along to the paint. Let's just talk about the paint a little bit. This Tex, uh, the Texas armor, Tex armor that they put on, that they put on the bed. And um, if you don't know who that guy is right there, uh, the Fox shop, go check him out after my video. It'll be, uh, he'll be in the description below. The link will be for John Fox at the Fox shop. The uh, Tex armor, I don't like it. I'm really careful about taking my receiver hitch in and out of my bed and it has seemed to chip all the, that armor off it flakes and it's already starting to rust around there and this has only been on here for two years just coming up on two years uh bub's bed i don't think anybody's towed with this thing because it doesn't even look like there's been a receiver hitch that's been in there uh, you can tell that there's no wear marks from the chains here and there so yeah, that's the second thing, or the second big complaint about these beds is the, the paint jobs on them, I'm not too happy with. I've already, I mean, I use mine. I, I use it like a truck bed. I've got a couple boo-boos in it here and there. Uh, the, so far though, this in the summertime, you'd think this would get super, super hot, and it doesn't actually. It doesn't get super hot in the summertime. You can actually, on a hundred degree day touch this and it's not baking hot i don't know how that is even possible but it it's uh the filler neck i'm we'll moving along to the filler neck i am not a big fan mine takes it, it forever to fill i'm gonna go ask bub about his real quick on his dodge it looks a little different on this model looks a little bit easier a little bit more angle to it, angle to the dangle. But trying to fuel one of these beds is a pain in the butt. I personally think if I were to ever design a flatbed, it'd be up here further in this headache rack or something, or even in the inside of the headache rack. Uh, something that's pointing down so you can kind of put the nozzle in and not have to sit there and hold it the whole time you're filling one of these big 28 29 30 gallon tanks up so guys to your review on the bed it's doing really well now the another question i have does it bolt right to your truck 
no it doesn't bolt right to your truck you have to buy an installation kit out the door with your bed and then you have to install it you have to weld it you have to put your bed on your truck get it uh, get it on there um, square and weld it and then bolt it to your frame so what i did is i welded my plates i don't know if you can see that or not i might have to do this in the daytime but i welded my i've got an installation vi video video i've got th uh, six pl um, six plates six plates here there's one there's two you notice that one's crooked and then three now by your gooseneck hitch you want to put one at an angle like that so when you're pulling it's pulling down into your frame this way and you're not you're not pulling this way there's an art to putting these on let's see uh papa did mine he did the the engineering on mine and i have pulled a load at 20 22,000 pounds uh trailer and cargo on a flat um on a gooseneck flatbed trailer and i had no problems the truck it, there was i didn't have enough truck to be honest with you the the automatic transmission was uh she was hurting a little bit welded them to the frame of the flatbed and then bolted it drilled holes and bolted it through my factory frame and if you have airbags they do work I did do an installation video. It wasn't the greatest in the world, but there is an installation video. If you go down to the description below, I've got my one year review on this flatbed and I also have an installation video. It's not the best. I was actually really sick when I filmed that. I had a really bad head cold. So if you wanna go check that out, it's in the description below. I'm gonna get Bubba, Bubba's opinions on these beds. He's only owned this truck a little bit. He didn't put the bed on. Let's check out his install on his bed real quick and see if we can pick it over a little bit. All right, guys, see that in the middle there? It's straight up and down. It's the same install kit. Really beautiful welds, but they should have put that one at an angle. So when you're pulling, it's pulling like this instead of trying to pull it like this. Up front, Dodge is a little different. And you can see right there, I don't like the way that's done. And I might talk Bubba into letting me do some welding on this bed. They actually welded that plate looks, that's not the way you're supposed to do that. Anyway, let's go to the back here. And I don't think that they put anything. Ugh. They put a back plate in. I do not like this at all. This is going to have to change. I don't even think they welded that one in. That does not look good at all. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do some more investigation on uh, Bubba's bed and see if it's done right. When we're running out of daylight though. Another question I get asked is a wiring harness. Uh, you have to buy, I recommend buying their wiring harness, but their wiring harness isn't gonna be a direct bolt in. You're gonna have to, I had to cut one or two wires. It's in my installation video and I had to solder I had to do some soldering and cutting off the factory wiring harness to make it work. But far is, it was super simple and it was almost a plug and play deal. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Comments do go down below. Like I said, hit that subscribe button. I got a lot on the channel. Broncos, F250, 350 excursions. Uh, a lot is going on on this channel. 70s Fords, 2000s Fords, 90s Fords, you name it, it's on this channel. Um, we're kind of just a, a Ford family here. So <clears throat> stay tuned, stick around. There's more to come. And uh, we'll catch you next time on Central Oregon shenanigans, guys. See you here.